with Silver Fox. Silver Fox is right. <laughs> but there's one reason you should try and laugh. I'm way older than any of your daddies. I'll tell you that right now. Now, I was lucky. In 1960, I got a BS in economics for a very prestigious school. And then I went to Northwestern and got an MBA in 1965. And it stood me in pretty good stead until this whole deficit thing. And I've been trying to figure out what, what those initials mean because all of those guys have degrees like that. I always knew that bullshit, BS meant bullshit. <laughs> but I'll tell you what MBA means, more bullshit ahead. <laughs> I really had a little secret about all the economic problems that are plaguing the country. Especially how all of the uh, uh, jobs have gone offshore. And it all depends upon how you use words to describe things. Does anyone here know what a desk was? <laughs> a desk is the place you went to work. It's called a desk. They changed, they changed it to a workstation. So, don't we all call them workstations? So what happens when it's a train station? A train stops. What happens when it's a bus station? A bus stops. Now what the hell do you think happens in a workstation? <laughs> Work stops. <laughs> and I'll give you another word. When I was young, they used to call uh, places where people signed up for employment and got interviewed and everything, they used to call it personnel. Now what do they call it? Human resources. That'd be a better name for a gentleman's club. <laughs> Now just two years ago, a friend and I who I'd seen three times in the past couple years, I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, so I have that New England accent, invited me to come to his 70th birthday party. And uh, of course he reminisced with friends about old times, and we have been friends since kindergarten. So we started to talk about our usual subject, sex. And, uh, you know, what we, what we concluded was, and this is very true, uh, I've lived through both stages of this, when we were young, what about it? <laughs> when we were young, sex was all fantasy and no reality. Now it's way too much reality and no fantasy. <laughs> I remember we used to ride around together in his 1954 Ford, checking out the action, looking for girls every night. We never found any girls at all. However, when Friday came around, we would have a race to our houses to pick up the, uh, oh God, what's that magazine? Uh, oh Jesus. There's a magazine with all the new women in it. And I was like, what? Playboy. No, they didn't have Playboy in those days. No, okay, well, whatever it was. National Geographic. <laughs> when we couldn't get the magazine, we always had Sunday to read the lingerie section and the advertisements in the newspaper. <laughs> That's fantasy. <laughs> Finally, I said to my friend, I said, you know, but you did have some reality. I remember when we were 16, you told me you got laid. And he said, well, I don't know, really, you know, we got in the back of a station wagon, we undressed, Undress. our skin touched a little bit, but there was no penetration. I said, wow, you ruined my life. I've been upset my whole life because you got laid before I did. What the hell is going on here? And let me tell you something. I'll give you just a few of the ramifications of that. College, I used to go to the library all the time. I bet you don't know what a library is. You have Google and Kindle and uh, iPad 2. That's your library. I bet you never been in one. But the libraries I went to had books. And you know what's great about the books? The books were all piled on shelves. We call them stacks. And there were, and there were these little letters. That the girls used to come in the stacks and climb up to the top stack, and boy, was there some good looking in those days. <laughs> and 
not, it's not just all about the shoe salesman. <laughs> and you know, I got, I got very desperate. I went to a very sophisticated school from New York and Pennsylvania. And I was a kid from Rhode Island. And I was 13 going on 10. All the, all the girls there were uh, 18 going on 45. <laughs> You know, I had, I had to try and pick out the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> we, had, we had, my first week of school, we had a, a little party I went to with high school girls. Now these girls were 14 to 17. I mean, not really. Maybe in those days it was legal. <laughs> so I met a girl there. And she told me, and she happened to say that her, her uh, brother was an assistant professor at the university. I said, oh, that's nice. And she was kind of, she was okay. So I made a date with her. So we went out on the date. I had it all planned out. I had a tweed jacket on with catch I had my white puck shoes. I brought a pipe, although I didn't smoke a pipe. So she would think I was cool. And we went to see a movie, and I still remember the name of the movie, it was called Gigi. And the, the song in the movie was Gigi, and all I could think of was G-Spot. <laughs> so we walked, to her, we walked to her house after the movies. And, you know, things were different then. Today, a thong is not wrong. In those days, when you wanted to undress a woman, it was like single-handedly taking apart a brick house. <laughs> <laughs> this girl had, she had a skirt. She had a slip. She had a crinoline. She had a petticoat. She had a petticoat. She had a girdle. By the time I got down to her panties, my DNA was all over the place. No. started a park, she said, that must be my brother. I said, holy shit. I made a pee line back to my university, and it took me a month before I got over it, because I figured, she'd tell her brother, I'd get, out, I'd get thrown out of school before my first class. Thank you. <laughs> I'd give him an hour and a half just to fucking talk. But it's not. <laughs> fucking not. He deserves a fucking four album record contract. <laughs> when your parents were like, the good old days. Those are the fucking good old days. <laughs> By the way, the magazine I think he was talking about was probably National Geographic. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to be eight years old. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Your next performer uh, is a very good friend of mine. He's also one of the co-producers of the Comedians You Should Know show every Wednesday at Timmy Old Tools. He's a great guy, fantastic dresser. Once again, for Mr. Michael Sanchez. 